since I came back to watching Global Force Wrestling at Slammiversary, I have to say I'm not all that surprised with what I've seen, but I am a little bit disappointed because I did enjoy Slammiversary. And I was hoping that that was a reintroduction to the company. I had seen some people in the months preceding Slammiversary tweeting me, commenting on YouTube, talking about how TNA still at the time was getting better. The product was much better. And maybe it was, but the reality is right now it's not. I don't know what this company is trying to do. I don't understand their direction. I don't know that they have any vision whatsoever. And watching this week's show again, while it was easier for me to get through than some of the previous week's episodes post Slammiversary, I couldn't get over the fact just how bizarre and stupid this product really is right now. For example, the whole concept of the Super X Cup. I get it, trying to get potentially new X Division talent, breathe some life into a very important division for your company and your company's identity. Uh, but this whole tournament has been bizarre. It's something we probably should care about, and I know at least in my case, I do not. And really, when you look at it and you saw the eight people originally in it, it felt like mostly jobbers. That's exactly the way it felt. Now, to be fair, Desmond Xavier and Drago... Their semifinal match, I felt like I was watching two guys that were worthy of being in Global Force Wrestling's X Division. The match itself was really choppy. Now, granted, a guy like Xavier can do some spectacular stuff. And you saw that here. And his spinal tap, or whatever it's called, finisher, is outstanding. And at least an actual roster member won. But with this whole Super X Cup, do they get a future X Division title shot? Do they get some type of push out of this? Are we doing this for any real purpose? I don't know. I don't know that it's been communicated effectively. I don't know if it's been communicated at all. And frankly, at this point in time, other than just to fill a spot on Destination X August 17th, I have no idea why this tournament is even happening. What I can't figure out is why we're promoting and booking a Bobby Lashley versus Matt Seidel match at Destination X. You've got Bobby Lashley who goes from a multiple time world champion to, for all intents and purposes, working with the jobber. And that's exactly what it is. Matt Seidel, he might not be Evan Bourne anymore, but he's still a jobber. And really to me, this doesn't elevate Seidel. This only brings down Lashley and the premise of the winner of the match gets the title shot of their choosing. How stupid it is that a Lashley would have to wrestle somebody like a Matt Seidel and win that match to get a world title shot, or even worse, lose that match so Matt Seidel could either A, get an X Division title shot, which seems kind of dumb, or B, God forbid, get a world title shot, which is almost where you seem like you might be going with this. And then later on, they did this cool kind of two-sport debate video, kind of harkens back to the day of whether Bo Jackson should stick with football or stick with baseball. But why are we having a guy basically implying that wrestling is fake and this shit is real fighting? And then when you're interviewing the head of the uh, MMA school or whatever, you have a UFC banner in the background. And last time I checked, Bobby Lashley doesn't fight for the UFC. Trevor Lee versus the Mumbai Cat or one of them or whatever the hell. You could see where this was going from a mile away. You knew all along that somehow it was going to be Sanjay Dutt as the Mumbai cat. And that and that's okay. You know, it's a clever thing to sit there and disguise yourself to try and get your revenge on the dude that has your title. But again, while the concept and premise is potentially very interesting, and I've said this multiple weeks now, the execution and the epic gaps in logic are just ridiculous and really hard to overcome. Why didn't Sanjay Dutt just knock down Trevor Lee and rip the fucking X Division title off of him and take it and get the hell out of Dodge? Why not? Why didn't he do that? Also, if we're going here, why doesn't he just lawyer up and force the company to give him the title back or he sues? It seems like it's pretty stupid to have Sanjay Dutt do this, win the match over Trevor Lee, just to not get his title back. Once again, why are we trying to throw the good guy out of the building and 
Bruce Pritchard potentially being the heel authority figure is not a good enough answer. Why would he be willing to do all of this, dress up in a disguise, wrestle the guy that has his fucking title, not actually get his title back, which would seem the whole premise of everything, just to sit there and have to throw out a ladder match to get back his belt that he rightfully has and then just be willing to leave like it's no big deal. This makes no fucking sense whatsoever. What's really weird is you have a guy like Eli Drake, who, while I haven't seen a ton of, I've heard so many people talk about stuff that he did in the past on the mic and that he's actually really good on the microphone, one of the company's better people on the microphone, and this company gives him absolutely zero mic time. Zero. You need personalities as much as anything else at this point in time. You need guys that can get over in ways other than flips and kicks. Why would you give him zero mic time? And then why is Congo Kong taking out Eddie Edwards on top of the standby wrestler? The concept of having somebody like the standby wrestler is if you're insisting on having Congo Kong go all types of crazy backstage, then you have him take out this freaky dude. Why are you taking out somebody like Eddie Edwards, a former world champion, somebody who actually kind of matters to your company, all because of the premise of Grado's fucking storyline? And then furthermore, why would you promote Eddie Edwards on house shows for this upcoming weekend, literally 10 minutes before this thing happens and then immediately announce that Eddie Edwards is not going to be there in the New York area this weekend. Why would you do all of that promoting of him on your Twitter page that he's going to be there and he's featured on your post or your graphic for the weekend's events and then you just bump him off because of this crap with everybody knowing that this crap is taped weeks ahead of time. It's just bizarre, weird, and flat out fucking stupid. So I will give the company credit for this. Through their social media avenues, they spent a week hyping up, pumping up, and promoting EC3 versus Moose for the Impact Grand Championship. Of course, ultimately, this didn't main event because Conan had to get that fucking main event spot. Good Christ almighty. My thing with the Grand Championship concept is this. I applaud doing something different. And I'm okay, in theory, with the concept of the rounds. But if we're going to rip off something, and that's what it is, rip off something from boxing or MMA, which again, there's nothing wrong with, because if you do it well, it can be a change in presentation for professional wrestling. And we all know we need massive change in the way professional wrestling is presented. Then do it right, at least. Have corner men for both of the guys, like you would in boxing and MMA. Have an entourage for these guys as they come out again doing something that boxing and MMA do well. Have ring girls hold up the card between the rounds. God knows, horny men might like to see women in scantily clad bikinis. And revealing the scores between the rounds kills suspense. It doesn't add to it. It's just stupid. Because you predictably know, more often than not, it's going to be this guy wins a round, this guy wins a round, and oh my God, what a surprise. Yet again, it comes down to round number three. If you sit there like they do in other sports, you might have the commentators give their opinions on what the score is and how they scored the rounds, but that doesn't mean that's how the judges are going to do it. That's realistic to boxing and MMA. This is just professional wrestling putting, frankly, a retarded spin on it. And then all of a sudden we get to round three, and then you clearly have Bruce Pritchard, so in the bag for Ethan Carter III, almost like it's kind of out of the blue, but not really. The only good thing that came out of this was later on, you just randomly had Ethan Carter III come out, get on top of the announce table, and profess his love to the Grand Championship. All of this circle jerking to get the that, I guess was ultimately worth it, but this Grand Championship concept could be so much better. But of course, when I look at the idiots running the village here, I'm not surprised that it isn't. In the six-man tag, all I could think about the whole entire time was two things. Number one... Why is suicide still a thing? This is a video game character from literally about a decade ago. Who gives a shit? You don't even go by the same name as a company anymore. And then number two, why is this whole Grado, Laurel Van Ness story still a thing? So at the beginning of the night, you had a really good video package with LAX talking about they're going to have a new member again, apparently. Um, Because that last time that went so well, right? But we're going to get a new member. And then at one point in time, randomly during the show, Josh Matthews reveals that it's going to be a member of El Patron's family, and then ultimately it wasn't. That was really just freaking bizarre. Why would you spoil that? 
This is kind of reminiscent of Bash at the Beach 96 as Hogan's coming out. And they're talking about Hulk Hogan is here. Go get him, daddy. And then Bobby the Brain Heenan says, whose side is he on? Like, why would you say that? Let the shit play out. And to sit there and spoil it, and then it really didn't spoil it, was just really fucking weird. And then when they're getting the Patron family interviewed backstage, the whole Dos Caras crew, why would Karen and Bruce give a shit about this family or anything involving them whatsoever at this point? Wasn't Karen tied up in the crap happening with the knockouts championship, which by the way, you got absolutely zero follow-up to on this week's show when it was the highlight of last week's show? I, I just don't get it. So you close out the show with a six-man tag, the Dos Caras crews, I call them, and LAX. Just because the story involves the champion doesn't make it main event worthy. Just because you're going to reveal a new member of LAX, again, does not make this main event worthy. And in terms of the presentation of LAX and some of the stuff they do, there are some good things about it. One of the major drawbacks to me is I barely know anything about the tag team champions of the company because this is becoming nothing more than a Conan glory hole. This is all about Conan. And if you think it is anything other than that, you are kidding yourself at this point. And I'm sorry, but the big reveal to come out of this at the end of the night is low key is joining LAX is beyond fucking stupid to me and completely out of left field and not in a good way. Oh, it's a surprise. Again, dropping trowel and taking a deuce in the ring is a surprise. It doesn't make it a good one. At least, if anything else, we're now getting it addressed. What's the whole point of this ADR feud? Who's he going to feud with over the world title from the LAX crew? We now know it's probably going to be low-key. Seriously, this is the world title feud? Low-key versus ADR? Now I don't give a shit what anybody says. If low-key is in your world title scene, then your company sucks, period. I don't care what type of faction he has behind him or anything else. It's just dumb. It's just stupid. When he's in the X Division, it works. It makes sense. Elevating him to a world title program is just all types of fucking ridiculous because ultimately global force wrestling is fucking ridiculous without any of the star power of this company of the past and some of the interesting things that occasionally happen so it's just a bizarre and weird show which again like i said was ironic because i found myself saying that since slammiversary this has been by far the easiest episode of impact wrestling for me to sit through and watch and not have to fight sleep through With that said, it still doesn't mean it was a good show. I don't know what this company is doing. And frankly, I don't know if they know what they're doing. It's just bizarre and weird. And I'm hoping by the time we get to Destination X, we get some type of answers and we get kind of a hitting of the reset button and we start to see some type of vision play out. But in the meantime, let me know what you thought of this week's show. I am the Schleg Daddy, and this is, of course, OTRS Central, where it's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Fuck Conan and his incessant main event love.